Hi everyone, what's up? It's me Pratima again and today I have the all new Realme 11 Pro Plus with me. Realme's number series have always been quite popular. The Realme 10 Pro Plus and the Realme 9 Pro Plus were decent phones in their price segments. This year with the Realme 11 Pro Plus, Realme has brought a few updates to their spec sheet and also a slightly higher price tag which puts the phone in a somewhat dangerous category because the 30,000 price range right now is a particularly crowded space with a lot of good options like the Moto Edge 40, the Poco F5 and the recently launched Galaxy F54. So without wasting any more time, let's get into the video with the unboxing first. Here inside the box, you get the phone of course at first, then we have a 100 watt Super Woo GAN charger, then we have the basics, a SIM ejector tool, a cover and some paperwork. I have been using this phone for about a week and I have been using it without a cover because I am in love with the design and the form factor of this device. So I didn't want to cover it up with a case. I think this is by far one of the most premium looking and well built phones in this price segment. It has a pretty balanced heft and it's not too heavy to hold either. The vegan leather bag feels amazing and contributes to a good grip and a lot of my friends have given a fair share of compliments to its design so I am pretty happy about the way it looks and feels. The Realme 11 Pro Plus is also available in a couple of cool color options. Besides this green color, there is white and black and all of them look stunning. And surprisingly, my unit has not gotten dirty either. I thought the leather finish might catch a lot of dirt easily, but no, it's still good as new. One of the other things I like about its design is the minimal bezels around the display which contributes to a good viewing experience. At the same time, it's also curved which makes it look like a more expensive phone. Personally, I am not someone who prefers a curved design, but the slight curves on this phone has not really been that big of a problem for me. Now, while we're talking about the display, I am happy to report that this is an almost flagship great screen. It's bright, it's responsive, and the colors on it look amazing. So yeah, overall, it's a really nice screen. Now, it's not an LTPO screen like we get on flagship phones, but still, it has 10-bit colors, it supports HDR10+, and other useful things like 2160Hz PWM dimming, so I am quite happy about it. Plus, like its predecessors, the haptics on this phone is also very good for the price. It's nice, it's precise, and typing or interacting with this device feels great. Even when you get calls, the vibration on it is strong enough so if you're on a bike or a car, there's less possibility of you missing your calls. The in-display fingerprint sensor also works fine here, although I would have preferred if it was located a little bit higher. Anyway, Realme has also included a good pair of stereo speakers on it. The output comes off a bit sharp at times, especially while listening to pop songs, but there is no distortion in the highest volumes and it can get pretty loud. Overall, I've had a great time watching my favorite series and listening to songs on Spotify on the Realme 11 Pro Plus. Okay, now comes the part where I think Realme could have done better. First is definitely the performance side of things. The Realme 11 Pro Plus comes with the Diamond City 7050 chipset and even though this is a new chipset from MediaTek which might give an impression of being an update over the last gen Diamond City 1080, but actually both these chipsets are pretty much the same. Hence, the performance I am getting from this phone is more or less the same as I got from the Realme 10 Pro Plus. For a little bit of context, playing heavy games like PUBG or Genshin Impact on the Realme 11 Pro Plus yields similar FPS and stability as the Realme 10 Pro Plus. And even general everyday performance feels pretty much the same. Realme also has not said much about the cooling system it has. On my gaming tests, the phone would reach around 42 degrees while playing Genshin Impact on high settings for about 20 minutes. Uh, it would not get extremely uncomfortable as the heat would be localized near the camera module only. Other less demanding games like PUBG or Call of Duty ran well without much overheating or throttling though. So I think Realme definitely should have provided a slightly powerful chipset here because the 30,000 price segment has some really good performing phones like the Poco F5 or the Moto H40. Even the Diamond City 7200 on the Vivo V27 is a better performer. 
Not to forget the Lava Agni 2 which is a much cheaper phone comes with the same Dimensity 7050 as this phone has so I am a little disappointed on that front. Except that the software experience on this phone is good. I like the simplicity of Realme UI and how easy it is to get along. This device also comes with Android 13 out of the box and Realme has committed to 2 years of OS and 3 years of security updates which is good enough. Well, not as good as Samsung's 4 year commitment but not bad either. Sadly, like most Realme phones, you do get a ton of bloatware apps on this phone too but luckily you can uninstall 80% of them. But there are a couple of apps that can't even be disabled which I had to tuck in a separate folder somewhere in the corner. Okay, let me talk about the cameras now. The Realme 11 Pro Plus features an upgraded 200 megapixel sensor with OIS. Then we have the usual 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The front houses a 32 megapixel shooter for selfies. Now, for the most part, the 200 megapixel sensor does a good job of maintaining nice details and dynamic range in the pictures. The color reproduction is also classic Realme with boosted greens and blues. I compared its cameras with the Vivo V27 which is one of the good camera phones in a similar price range and found Realme's photos to compete well overall when clicking pictures of landscapes and flowers and such. Realme has also been advertising its 4x lossless zoom feature and after testing it, I must say it works quite well. The 4x zoom shot is actually achieved by cropping in from the 200 megapixel mode. Hence, the detail levels here are commendable and the shot does not look over sharpened or unnatural in any way. So even though there is no dedicated telephoto or periscope camera here, you can digitally zoom in and shoot moonshots like this which turn out pretty okay actually. However, this 200 megapixel sensor does struggle a little when focusing on nearby subjects so you will have to maintain a certain distance to get a sharper picture. Likewise, one thing that Realme definitely needs to work on is processing human subjects better. I found the skin tone in portraits, normal photos and even selfies to be much better and vibrant on the Vivo B27. I do appreciate that Realme has provided a 2x portrait option which makes the portraits look more appealing in terms of subject focus but I think they could make the skin tone a little more pleasing. During nighttime, the pictures from its primary camera are fairly sharp and the large 1x1.4-inch sensor of the 200 megapixel camera captures a good amount of light to bring out well-exposed pictures. Realme says it uses something called a Tetra 2 pixel technology that, depending on the lighting conditions, intelligently uses either 4 in 1 pixel binning to get 50 megapixel photos or 16 in 1 binning to get 12.5 megapixel in extremely low light cases. Anyway, when you turn to the ultra wide angle shots, well, they are just average in terms of details and color reproduction. And even the videography side of things is not the most impressive here. With an upgraded sensor, I was expecting the Realme 11 Pro Plus to shoot good videos but the max you can shoot here is up to 4K 30fps videos and they look just okay with average stabilization. The color reproduction is not bad and the videos have a wider field of view but Realme definitely could have done a better job. Even selfie videos are capped to 1080p 30fps and come out just okay. Lastly, the battery life on this thing has fared me well. Under normal light kind of usage, I got around 7 hours of screen on time and while putting some gaming and camera tests into the mix, I was getting around 6 hours here which is good enough to last you for a full day. This phone can charge pretty fast too. With the 100 watt charger, it takes around 35 minutes for the phone to get fully charged. And because this is a GAN charger, it does not dissipate too much heat while charging either. So to conclude, as I said during my review, I've had a great experience with the Realme 11 Pro Plus. This phone definitely feels premium and its display is great while the inclusion of nice haptics further makes interacting with this phone a hoot. But arguably, the biggest Achilles heel of this phone is the choice of chipset and maybe the camera performance as the main 200 megapixel camera could have been more reliable across both photography and videography aspects. Likewise, since this is
is a more premium offering from the company. A better ultra wide angle camera could also make it a more appealing choice since brands like Nothing and Motorola are indeed providing higher resolution ultra wide angle sensors. So everyone, that was all for my unboxing and review of the all new Realme 11 Pro Plus. This review unit was sent to us by Realme themselves, but the company holds no editorial input in our review whatsoever. So saying this, thanks so much for watching. I'm Pratima Adhikari and I'll see you soon.